Hello and welcome to One Minute Theatre Reviews. I'm Paul Seven Lewis and I'm here at the Minerva Theatre in Chichester to see Sing Your Heart Out for the Lads. And as you can see, the show starts outside the theatre and I think there's a little bit more we can look at inside too. And here we are inside the Minerva at the King George pub. I went in, as you saw, impressed by the immersive set, but I came out shocked to the core by this coruscating exposure of racist, nationalist England. Roy Williams' play takes us to the heart of the dark side of English football supporters, the so-called hooligans, the ones who chant racist remarks, the ones who nowadays abuse black players on social media, and those who let it happen. Racism exists in all corners of society, but this play looks at a microcosm, the working class, or mainly working class, tribalism that afflicts the national game. It has its funny moments, certainly, but for the most part, this play is horrifying. We meet the all-too-believable characters in the King George pub, where they've assembled to watch England play Germany in the year 2000. To an extent, they're representative of various kinds of working class people, but Roy Williams imbues them with a complexity that takes them beyond stereotypes. It's not a comfortable evening, but this is an important play in a flawless production. That's the one minute review, but keep watching for much more about Sing Your Heart Out for the Lads. Sing Your Heart Out for the Lads first appeared in 2002, I'd like to think we've moved on to a more equal and tolerant society since then, and perhaps we have a bit, but there is still an unacceptable amount of racism around, as the Black Lives Matter campaign has shown and has revealed, for example, recently about Yorkshire County Cricket Club. And, connected with racism, the kind of nationalism that goes beyond pride in one's country to hatred of foreigners and immigrants, as Billy Bragg said recently. Not everyone who voted Brexit is racist, but every racist voted Brexit. This is a revival of the Chichester production which was first performed in 2019 in the so-called Spiegel Tent. Nearly all of the cast has reassembled and the immersive set conceived by the original director, Nicole Charles, is also reproduced, but on a larger scale. In fact, the first thing you see is the set designed by Joanna Scotcher. It replicates in painstaking detail a traditional London pub, which then overflows into and beyond the auditorium. Some of the audience sit around the perimeter of the set as though they're customers in the bar. It's even a working bar. And I had a drink there during the interval, perched on a bar stool. But the fun stops as soon as the play begins. We meet and get to know these characters, some of whom are members of the pub's football team, all there to watch England play Germany in a game of football. Some are out-and-out out racists, some are covert racists, and some hide their racism. Maybe they're even unaware of it. However, it does come out when emotion takes over. At one extreme is Laurie, an angry skinhead played by Richard Riddle, so close to boiling point that his face is lobster red. We can see that all these people have reasons to resent their lowly position in society, and that aggressively supporting their football team may give them some reflected status. But Laurie is more than that. He's a psychopath that's just looking for someone to kick. At his side, whispering in his ear, is Alan, played with a cold voice and dispassionate demeanour by Michael Hodgson. He's an articulate man who justifies his sense of racial superiority and, like the leaders of fascist parties through the ages, manipulates ignorant people like Laurie to do his dirty work. There are two black people in the group, uh, Mark and his younger brother, Barry. Mark has been in the army and fought for his country, only to find that his country doesn't seem to regard him as truly British. We discover that his own behaviour as a soldier has been brutal. Mark Springer plays him as superficially calm, but with a low-key resentment that rumbles across the pub floor. Makia Ahmed plays uh, Barry, the team's star player, who knows that his teammates are racist, to a greater or lesser extent, but chooses to ignore that in an attempt to fit in, even chanting about winning World War II, nearly 60 years on at that time, and describing in cringing detail what he'd like to do sexually to Victoria Beckham. In fact, sexism and misogyny are also never far away. 
Jean is the woman whose name is above the door of the pub, and in a nuanced performance, Sean Reese Williams shows her as someone used to getting her way through charm, but having no control over her son or her customers. She threatens, but never takes action over racist or aggressive behaviour. And in this respect, she can be seen as a metaphor for the rest of us, the majority in society who are against racism, but don't confront it. Laurie's brother, Lee, is another example. He's an off-duty police officer, but constantly turns a blind eye to Laurie's violence and racism. I didn't hear that, he quips. His conflicted personality is conveyed brilliantly through haunted eyes and sagging shoulders by Alexander Cobb. As the match progresses and goes badly for England, the tension grows, and an explosion by Laurie becomes ever more likely. His racist comments become more and more explicit. But when the violence comes, it's from an unexpected direction. I don't want to say much more because I don't want to spoil the ending. But I will say that in a play that is already very shocking, the ending the, is, is a crescendo that builds uh, into intense action and confusion that le that's horrifying and and left me shaken that even though there's a lot going on those final moments are so well orchestrated you can take in everything that's happening massive credit here to the original director nicole charles uh, the director of the revival joanna bowman movement director chris whittaker and fight director kate waters i felt i needed a shower after being in the company of this group of england supporters if there's a message in this play it's that Racism will flourish unless we all take a stand against it whenever we encounter it on a personal level. And that you can't fight something unless you understand it. And my goodness, at the end of this play, I felt I had an understanding that I just cannot get out of my head. I give Sing Your Heart Out for the Lads five stars. I hope you found this review useful, and if you did, why not subscribe and then you'll be the first to know about my future reviews. And please like, share. And you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And if you want to read my reviews, go to oneminutetheatrereviews.co.uk. Thank you for watching.